All right, David Harry here, and I have just paid for the monthly subscription for Final Cut Pro on the iPad. Now, after this month, I am going to cancel the subscription. So basically, what I found immediately is that there are a number of pretty serious problems with FCP on the iPad. Now, things such as you cannot import a project which was created on FCP on a Mac. That's a bit of a showstopper. Also, you cannot connect to an external monitor with the iPad and use like an external monitor to monitor your timeline. I think that's also a bit of a showstopper. However, the biggest problem and the one that I'm going to focus on here is the fact that you cannot read media directly from external drives. So to be clear, let's just say you've got a load of video files on these external drives here and you plug them into the iPad. Yes, you can transfer the files into the iPad and then edit them. However, what you cannot do is to edit directly from the external external drives. Now I can see this becoming a big problem very quickly for a lot of iPad users out there. So as a for instance, let's just say you have an iPad that doesn't have a huge amount of internal storage. Well, very quickly, you're going to have to be forced into either deleting some of the apps that are on the iPad, some of the bigger apps to free up some space, or you're gonna to have to start deleting a lot of media files. You can obviously be backing them off also as well, but the problem still remains the same. You have got to start clearing space on the iPad in order to transfer in all those video files that you want to edit. Now, on the other hand, you may have an iPad with a large amount of internal storage as a, for instance, one terabyte. Well, here's the problem with this or the potential problem. If you have got one terabyte worth of internal storage for your iPad, you have got that for a good reason because you know that you are either going to be putting a lot of apps on or big apps or indeed lots of files, highly likely to be something like photos and videos. So even if you do have an iPad with like a big storage option on it, the problem with that is you are still going to run into this problem very quickly where you fill up the space of the iPad. Once again, you are then left with either having to delete or back off apps or say picture files, video files, or indeed any of the files that you may have on that iPad. Now, we know there's going to be some people out there who might be thinking certain things such as maybe in the future, Apple will do an update to FCP on the iPad, which means that it can do direct accessing of media on external storage. Maybe that does happen. However, that should be here right now. It is a fundamental requirement for doing video editing. Anybody who does any serious video editing on any platform will be using external drives for media storage. And other people might be thinking to themselves, well, just work with the storage that you've got to hand and just be careful about what you do. Well, that's not that easy to do. As a for instance, this is a four terabyte SSD here. And on here, there is over three terabytes worth of ProRes files. So if you're using an iPad and you're doing some pretty serious editing, which let's face it, it's called Final Cut Pro. So the assumption here is that it will get used for pro work. If that is the case, then it will not be uncommon to be using ProRes files. As a, for instance, on this drive, I've actually got 8K ProRes files, but the bulk of my ProRes files are 4K 60 frames per second. And that's the reason why I'm using over three terabytes of the storage on this particular drive to store my ProRes files. Now there is another problem for FCP on the iPad, and that is DaVinci Resolve on the iPad. Now, I'm not gonna go deep diving into anything here. I might do this in another video, but basically Resolve just absolutely wipes the floor with FCP in so many ways. However, just to keep this focus to this whole external storage problem for FCP, even the free version of DaVinci Resolve will allow you to edit from external drives. Now, just think about that for a moment even the free version of DaVinci Resolve will allow you to access and edit video files located on external drives. And the paid version, well, there's actually only one version of FCP and it is paid, but an alternative to Resolve is FCP, which you pay for, 
can't even do that. Okay, so that should just about do it for this video then. I really did want to just kind of stay on this one particular problem here. And for me personally, this really is a showstopper. There is absolutely no way that anybody working, even like just like semi-professionally or even domestically, there is absolutely no way anybody who works on video editing systems does not use external drives to edit from. I mean, this really is a huge problem for any video editing software. And then coupled with those other issues that I mentioned before, and there are other problems which I may do videos about, as far as I'm concerned, Apple really haven't done a good job here. And especially because there is such a thing called DaVinci Resolve, which is one, way better, and two, has a free version. Anyways, if you've liked the video, give it a thumbs up. A sub to the channel would be absolutely awesome. I'm Dave. David Harry, thank you very much for watching this video. Take care and goodbye now.